Kill them! Kill them all! Hello everybody, my name is Luna and today I'd like to talk about killing your player characters. Despite all of their best laid plans, sometimes adventurers will go off on a noble quest and get in over their heads, leading to the death of a beloved player character. And the way that you handle this death is something that I think requires some thought and some attention so that you're not caught off guard if it comes up in one of your sessions. So how frequent is death in 5th edition anyway? Well, it really depends on what kind of a game you run. The way that death works in D&D is that if you are dropped to zero hit points, you fall under conscious and you start making death saving throws. When it comes around to your turn, you roll a d20 and if you get above a 10, you succeed on your death saving throw. But if you roll under a 10, then you fail. If you roll three fails before somebody can heal you or stabilize you, then you are dead, gone. Bye bye. But if you roll three successes, then you are considered stable and you're still unconscious, but you're no longer dying. If you roll a natural 20 when rolling a death save, then you get one hit point back and you pop back up to life. But if you roll a natural one, then you automatically fail two death saves. That is how a character died very recently in one of my games. <sighs> Characters can also die if they take massive amounts of damage. So if you take enough damage that you drop to zero hit points and then the amount of damage left over exceeds your hit point maximum, then you just immediately die. If your hit point maximum is 12 and you get hit for 25 points of damage, then that's all folks. Characters can also immediately die from spells like Power Word Kill and some effects that your very nasty dungeon master might put in a dungeon or in a trap. So how much death is going to be in your game? Well, that is really up to you and your players. Is it going to be a very deadly campaign where there is a lot of character turnover and there is a frequent threat of death? Or is it going to be a game where death is very unlikely or potentially is not even around at all? If you don't want to include death in your game, then that is okay. As long as all of your players are on board and you all enjoy that way of playing, then that's fine. You don't have to include death for your game to be interesting and exciting. And we're gonna get into some ways for dealing with that in a little while. If you are going to have death in your game, should players have backup characters? Some players really enjoy having backup characters because I guess it kind of helps them prepare for what could happen and it helps them give something to be excited about if their PC does die in a game. Another thing to discuss is do NPCs get saved? So some DMs will rule that if an NPC gets dropped to zero hit points, they immediately die. Other DMs will rule that they also get death saves or it might be a bit of a mix of both. Some important story driven NPCs might get death saves where others that are not really specific to the story won't. It's also really important to chat with your players about what they want or might need if their character dies. They might want to see it coming so they have plenty of time to prepare themselves. So if that's the case, you wanna give them plenty of lead up. You wanna give them plenty of warning signs so that they know what's about to happen and that they can be emotionally prepared. Other players might want to explore avenues of getting some closure. They might want to write a letter that the other team members can discover on their body to be read allowed at the game, or even a will outlining how their possessions are going to be carried out. Everyone is going to handle it differently, and of course some people might not know how they're going to handle it until it happens, but just be receptive and open to giving your players whatever it is they need. For some people, you know, a character dying is not a big deal, they just move on and they go to the next one. But for other people, they get really invested in their characters, they're very emotionally attached to them, and in some cases will spend years playing this character. And they can feel some genuine grief and genuine sadness at the death of them, even though they're imaginary. I mean, we've all had TV shows or books where we've absolutely sobbed our eyes out at the death of a character that is just a figment of our imagination. So it makes sense that in a role-playing game like D&D, where you do invest so much time and so much of your own personality into it, that those things are going to translate as well. So those are the things that you should discuss with your players ahead of time and talk about in a session zero just to get everything out on the table. Now, when you're actually in the game and you think a character is going to die, before they do, make sure all of the party has the information that they would reasonably have in this situation. It's not always fun for a death to be like a, ha ha, gotcha, you stepped on a plate and now you're dead. You don't want your players to feel like they would have been able to do something if they just had this specific piece of information, which would have been available to their characters. So make sure that you're describing things as much as possible. Sometimes it's helpful to reiterate the stakes to the players of like, if you do this, this could happen so that they know exactly what they're getting in for and it allows them to make that choice of like you know what I know I'm probably gonna die 
but I'm gonna do it anyway, because then I get to go out in a blaze of glory, saving my teammates. Now, if a character does die during one of your sessions, here are some things that you can do. Number one, give the player the space to leave the table if they need to for a moment. Take a little time out, take a little hiatus to just kind of give them a few moments if that's what they need. Number two, let them have some last words. I think the first time I saw this was on Dimension 20, where Brennan had an NPC who was dying kind of say something, which at the time was, I was like, oh, yeah, of course, you can absolutely do that. Because even though technically they are unconscious when they're failing their death saves, it's nice to say like they just come back to consciousness for a moment to say some final words um, to give them that sense of closure. If needed, give space in the game for the other player characters to grieve or to hold a service, uh, to kind of mark this moment as something important to both them and to the story. And if possible, think about having an IRL celebration of that character's life, even if it's just going out for drinks or taking a moment to share your favorite things that that character did in the game. Just something to mark that important event that's happened if it feels significant for you and your players. If appropriate, give the character a kind of epilogue. You could narrate them kind of going forth and up and becoming part of the magical weave. Or you could show them gaining entry into the celestial planes of their deity. And if possible, keep the character relevant and present in the game by using tie-ins such as a visit from an old friend of the character or the resolution of a side quest that the character was involved in to keep their memory and their contribution to the game alive. If there is the possibility that the character could be brought back via resurrection, have a chat with the player out of character, out of the game, to see if that's something that they actually want. Some people really like the idea of just having a final, you know, going out in a blaze of glory death and then moving on to a new character and to a new story, whereas others would be super duper happy if their character was revived. So once you've killed off a character, how do you go about bringing in a new character to the game? Well, first of all, I think the new character should absolutely be the same level as the current party. I know that some people prefer to have the character come in at a lower level and then kind of like prove themselves before they level up. Personally, I don't think it's any fun to have mechanical disadvantages in game just because your character happened to die. So I feel pretty strongly about that. But of course, you know, it's your game. If you disagree with me, that's fine. When the player does bring in a new character, take some time to work out a good entry point. It doesn't have to be straight away. Uh, if your player has a particular character in mind and it would be better suited for them to come in in like maybe a session or two's time, work that out with them so that the introduction can feel organic. If they still want to be involved in the game but they're not ready to introduce their new PC, you can also have them run an NPC just to kind of keep them playing in the game so they're not sitting at the table just not playing at all because that's also not fun. If you want to make death more interesting or more exciting in your game, here are a couple of homebrew rules that might interest you. This is one that I use in my home games which is that anytime you are knocked unconscious and are making death saving throws, you take a scar and the player gets to decide what that skull looks like and it's a nice physical reminder of that life or death moment in the game. Dale Kingsmill actually has a really great video about different kinds of damage and how that damage might translate into physical scars or injuries. Um, so I'll link that in the description below in case you want something like a little bit crunchier with a little bit more something something. Another thing you might like to try is keeping death saves a secret where the player doesn't tell the other players if they succeeded or failed. This kind of ups the tension and ups the drama because if someone is down, you don't know how long they're gonna be rolling before until they're dead, so you need to like, get over there with that healing potion. Now there are some abilities that are impacted by not knowing if they have succeeded or failed a death save. I think some bards or maybe even some sorcerers have a spell where as a reaction they can help you succeed on a death saving throw. Uh, so if that is the case for your party, make sure you just kind of discuss how that might work if you are going to keep your death save secret. This next rule is not one that I've tried, but it sounds kind of fun. I can't remember where I read it. It was it was probably on Reddit. But basically when a character falls to zero hit points, they are not unconscious. They can either choose to make a death saving throw or they can automatically fail a death saving throw in exchange for attempting one action. Action. I would probably stipulate that that action couldn't be healing themselves because then paladins and clerics would basically be unstoppable. But I like the idea of there being this kind of like life or death moment where they could make a decision to fail a death save to do something that would really positively impact the outcome of the 
battle. I live for the drama. If you want your game to be particularly deadly, then you might think about introducing the meat grinder mode from Tomb of Annihilation, which raises the death save to 15 as opposed to 10. That drops your survival odds from 60% to 26%. So if you really want to chew through some characters, that's a good way to do it. If you're familiar with Critical Role, you might know that Matthew Mercer has his own resurrection rules. So rather than a character automatically being resurrected through revivification or something like that, the party has to go through a series of challenges in order to see if that soul is willing to come back to the body. So up to three members of the party can assist with the ritual by describing how they are helping. So they kind of have to try and use the skills that they have to assist in this ritual and then they roll a skill check and their success or failure will contribute to the likelihood of the revivification ritual itself being successful. Some of the ways they might help include like making a herbal concoction or praying to a deity or just like screaming at their friend like come back. Once the contributions are complete the DM rolls a single resurrection check and the DC is lowered for the number of successes that the party has contributed. I really like this method because I think it really raises the stakes and it gets all of the party members involved and it heightens the drama. Again, I just really love that dramatic, juicy stuff. If you want to check out the full rules for that resurrection challenge, I've put a link in the description below. Now, if you've decided that you don't want to have any death in your game whatsoever, then here are a couple of ways you can keep things interesting and exciting without that threat of character death. You can use permanent scars. Uh, like we talked about before, if your player falls unconscious, then they can pick or you can pick a permanent scar that they carry with them for the rest of the game. You could have it that if they fall unconscious, they need to seek out a special healing spell or a quest item or something like that to be fully restored to health. You know, maybe they need to seek out a well-known witch in the woods who's the only person who can really fully heal them. And so they're, maybe their hit point maximum is slightly reduced until they complete that quest. You could also even have them lose a skill or a proficiency or have a mechanical disadvantage to their weapon attacks. This is something again that it's important to discuss in a session zero so that all of the players are on board with this and whatever detrimental or disadvantageous thing that you're doing you need to make sure that the players have the opportunity to earn it back somehow. So again maybe through completing a side quest they're able to regain the proficiency or able to get their full weapon damage or whatever it is back again. Or you could consider using levels of exhaustion that if they drop unconscious, then they gain a level of exhaustion, which they need to rest and recover from in order to be back to full health. Whatever level of death you have in your game, whether it's a character falling over every two sessions or having no death at all, as long as you and the players are having a fun time, then that is really what it's all about. If you have any particular homebrew rules or things that you do to handle death in your games, I would love to hear them. Please put them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye. This is something important to discuss at a session zero.